Welcome, you're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. More than four years of war in eastern Ukraine have taken a devastating toll on the educating system, destroying hundreds of schools. Now, according to a recent UNICEF report, about 500,000 children are in urgent need of protection and humanitarian assistance because of the military hostilities in Donbass. The situation is particularly severe for children who live within 20 kilometers of the contact line or shelling poses lethal threat. To talk more about protecting children from the effects of armed conflicts, we're joined in the studio today by Varvara Pakomenko. She's the head of mission at Geneva Call. Hello and thank you for joining us. Hi. So, as far as I know, Geneva Call is an NGO. It is an international NGO. Okay, so what's the aim and the purpose of the NGO? It is an international NGO with a HQ in Geneva, so it works worldwide in the uh, zones of armed conflict uh, with the main aim to, aim to protect civilians through dissemination of a knowledge of international humanitarian law or law of conflict, law of war. Mm -hmm. So it's, we are trying to target uh, weapon bearers, people who are fighting on the front line, uh, armed groups, uh, to convince them that they should oblige and they should follow uh, IHL procedures, international humanitarian law norms and procedures, uh, to better protect civilians and uh, their own fighters when they need help, protection, like when they are wounded, when they are uh, imprisoned or dead, unfortunately. Uh, and we do trainings, we uh, try to and this uh, talk to commanders, um, maybe sometimes help them in improving their own internal procedures and regulations. Uh, we do uh, communication campaigns that people living in the area better understand what the rules are during the war and people fighting understand it uh, in the same way. Because during the war, the regulations sometimes are quite different from the peaceful times. All of that could be logically and pretty much understood by a grown-up. Mm -hmm. What about children? How do you explain the whole strategy and uh, the rules of behaving during the armed conflict to children? While it's not our kind of primary uh, audience to talk to children, quite often we do, because they just live there and they should understand how they should behave when they mm -hmm. meet soldiers or meet fighters. Because according to international humanitarian law, children are protected. They can be targeted, uh, primarily targeting. But if they started to directly participate in the conflict, they may become a target. And this is very unfortunate, but that's what should, children should understand and stay away mm -hmm. from fighters, from the position as far as possible, any kind of an engagement. Well, I think you can pretty easy to explain this, that people, who have a weapon, they have much bigger power, and it means they have Absolutely. much bigger res responsibility. They have much more opportunities to harm than in peaceful times, and they are allowed to harm. Mm -hmm. That's why it should be regulated. How they should conduct hostilities, whom they can kill, whom they should not kill, whom they, how do they have to think before planning operation or conducting operation. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the, the program targeting children within uh, the Geneva Call NGO has been launched only in December 2018. Now, uh, the eastern part of Ukraine has been at war for over four years now, so why only now? Well, what we work, it's not only targeting children, it's one of the components of our work. It's a pro general protection mm. civilians and children. This is one of the most vulnerable groups, of course, uh, in the conflict. Uh, we started last year uh, and indeed the problem exists for years before. Uh, <coughs> and you are completely right that there was a need even before. We started now, but we believe it's not too late. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Hostility is going on. And now maybe it's a bit easier to talk to the sides of the conflict when there is already a bit lower level of hostilities. And they und many understood that the conflict would not be solved just like this in a few mm -hmm. months. That you, it's in the fifth year of the conflict that you need to have some regulations. You need to understand what the relations with civilians is about. Because uh, having a good relations with civilians, it's benefiting the military themselves. It's about their own security as they live in the area where civilians maybe not support them, but at least understand that they are here to protect them. Uh, maybe having a, a better information about what's going on. Uh, why 
problem of education, production of education, unfortunately, this is a very uh, important issue in Ukraine. Uh, for now, about 750 in school, 50 schools have been uh, damaged during the conflict. I mean, this is a big problem, not mm. only in the um, conflict area. I know that a lot of rural areas um, on the territory of Ukraine are suffering from the lack of schools and um, educational facilities. And now that we're in a conflict, in an armed conflict with another country, and it's the part of our country is under control of occupiers, how do we protect our children? How do we secure their right? Because mm -hmm. this is a constitutional right, their right mm -hmm. to be educated. It is. Uh, even at times of war, rights of, to education sh should not be limited. Exactly. It's seen as one of the most important and basic rights because limiting it, violating it, has such a long and negative consequences for years ahead. If people don't go to school, that they just miss their terms, they cannot go to university later on, uh, some stayed uneducated, unliterate, and we can see it all across the conflict areas, then it's sometimes a generation which cannot benefit to econ uh, uh, economic development, to reconstruction of the region later on. Uh, but also it's of course a huge uh, psychological effect on, on the kids. Uh, <coughs> there is a, even a document uh, exists among the, all the treaties, uh, international treaties, mm -hmm. uh, which particularly focuses on the protection of education during the armed conflict. It's called Sa Safe School Declaration, which says that uh, schools, uh, universities, all the education uh, institutions and facilities are primarily c civilian objects. They should not be targeted and they should not be occupied and used by militaries. Because once you occupy it or position your uh, uh, units nearby, it can, can become a target for the enemy. Mm -hmm. So it's a two side obligations, negative and positive. So please protect your own the schools on your own territory and don't target the schools on the other territory. Mm -hmm. uh, protect children, protect uh, teachers. Uh, that uh, access to education, if it has to be limited, for example, there is an um, armed operation going right in the area where children study. Of course, it's should, the sh children should be evacuated for temporary time, uh, temporarily. But then they should receive an access to education as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, schools, if they, they should not be occupied, but if they've been occupied, then uh, militaries should clean the schools after all, be secure, be sure that there is no any unexplosive devices left, that nobody can even think the school somehow can be used as a military object. And unfortunately, we see that it's quite often in many um, areas, schools are the biggest buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why militaries using them to position soldiers, uh, that's a, a very big challenge. Uh, so how to balance military necessity to continue operating and the security of kids and security of education process. Schools are not only um the buildings where children go and get educated. It's also about socializing. <coughs> How do we deal with that? How do we protect the children's rights and, for that matter, everybody else's right to socialize, to become a, a social um, piece in the chain? Mm -hmm. Well, once war is going on, we need to always think about the future peace. How we're going to live in it, even if it's now seen that my bit war going to never ends, but still it will. And children who are growing up during the armed conflict should understand that there is an other options in life than just being involved in this conflict. Mm -hmm. In many conflicts around the world, we see the problem that children are used as a soldiers or somehow affiliated with a. Yeah. Militaries, for example, uh, our colleagues uh, working, my colleagues working in Syria, uh, just last December secured that Syrian Free Army released 56 children which were fighting there as a fighters within their, their ranks. But it's only one of the problem. It's n not just mm -hmm. only children with, with weapon. It's a children who don't see the other opportunities. 
the only model they see sometimes is mm -hmm. a fighter, the person with a weapon. Mm -hmm. So schools tr should, as much as possible, provide and show them the other opportunities in life. That peace is about restoring the normal life. They should always remember what normal life is. And when we talk about international humanitarian law, it's about the word humanitarian is very important. It's about maintaining as much as possible the normality mm -hmm. that people live here. Unfortunately, we don't have a 19th uh, century type wars anymore where army were fighting in the fields to, to each other. Most of the uh, armed conflicts now go in, in a urban districts uh, where yeah. civilians live and they cannot be moved away. What are um, what are the other methods, or are the optional methods that Geneva call NGO is using, except for talking to people to to settle the conflict, to not to settle the conflict, but mm -hmm. to to um, let people know, to educate the people involved in the conflict on the uh, rules mm -hmm. of behaving during an armed conflict. Yeah, we're not settling the conflict. Yeah. I, we yeah. all would like that war ends, but what we do is just trying to say that there should be rules. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> it's very much about talking, yes, but talking in the different uh, way. So you, when you talk to the ground le level fighters, mm -hmm. you explain them some very simple rules. What you should do, what you cannot do, what is actually a war crime, what you can be persecuted after all mm -hmm. for. Uh, because very often uh, we see the problem that when the war starts, uh, people didn't plan to, to, to participate in it. Then war just started and they found themselves in the rank of military units. Uh, and they never learned anything about uh, international humanitarian law, what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to I assume to they fight. didn't have any time. Yeah. Even in the um, ranks of the army, it's not always happening while okay. they should be. Uh, so we <coughs> teach them this basic uh, issues. When you talk with the commanders, it's, it's a very different. Yeah? So it's the people who are planning the operation, who understand how it's all functioning. Of course you can have a person uh, who just wants to harm, but it's very rare. Mm -hmm. Usually people are normal people. They just very often don't understand how to improve the situation, how to, what tools they can use to follow these rules. And that's what we're helping with, mm -hmm. helping to find these tools, maybe to refer some problems to other organizations, uh, which can help. Uh, <coughs> helping to develop, uh, if needed, uh, some internal procedures, which can regulate uh, the mm -hmm. behavior of soldiers, and so on. Uh, and as I said, we also do this um, education information campaign for broader public society. Sometimes we help local communities mm -hmm. uh, because they very often know much better how to secure themselves. What do they need to improve their own security? They sometimes need some tools and maybe some small support or maybe help to uh, establish a dialogue with uh, uh, militaries. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for what you're doing and thank you so much for coming here and telling us all about it. Thank you. That was Varvara Pekomenko. She's the head of mission at Geneva Call. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned with UATV for more.